Hold back the river. Not possible. James Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Moses, maybe. Moses. Yeah, well, you know, if that's who you're targeting with him, isn't it? The annoying thing with James Bay is Moses got Spotify, so um, <laughs> at best he's going to make a tiny amount for Moses streaming it. <laughs> this is XFM on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Do you think... There's a, there's a philosophical question. Would Moses have Spotify or iTunes? I probably, he probably wouldn't have iTunes because of Apple's business practices, would he? Whatever he gets on his tablet, mate. I don't get it. Uh, because yeah. he's got the Ten Commandments on oh his tablet. Oh, my God, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have we got an applause sound effect? <laughs> no. Isn't it, Charles? <laughs> that is, I mean, <laughs> God. Yeah. Uh, but you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised where it came from. <laughs> Do you know what's annoying? People are going to think we planned that. Yeah. yeah. On the, um, I don't, uh, I, um, we need a catchphrase for, the, for uh, I've got a catchphrase that I'm going to do now, we need a sound effect for it, which is, um, I don't know if I've said this before, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I've said this before, but, um, did I tell you about, uh, to talk about, um, religious figures coming back when I was in America and they were talking about Jesus on a religious radio station in a taxi and they were having a serious debate over uh, if Jesus came back whether he'd be dressed in modern day clothing you've said this before yeah oh fine but it's very similar to the Moses tablet thing yeah so um <laughs> what do you think Moses what apps would Moses have um BBC Weather or the Weather Met Office app. do you think yeah Work out when it rains. <laughs> but surely he doesn't care. It's, if any, he's going to have the least issues. True, actually, yeah. Would he live in the same place? <laughs> I don't know. Where did he live? E Egypt. Egypt, yeah. Probably not. I'm not sure. Anyway. Not with Nigel Farage would probably say move over here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gone onto this computer in the office and you know you've got the Google thing in the top right mm -hmm. where this is the last thing someone's Googled now I don't know if someone at the previous person was having an existential crisis but they've just Googled if a tree falls in a wood <laughs> 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 do you think they were trying to get a definitive answer out of it <laughs> I don't know if it was the previous DJ sat quietly at 8am in a dark studio going I need to work this one out <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to... Shall we put it in? Shall we see what comes up? <laughs> I mean, this is groundbreaking radio. <laughs> um, it does make a sound. Josh Whittacombe. Now, Neil. Yes, Josh Whittacombe. It is time. Good good incorporation of what the show is. Thanks. Should we, should we do that more often? <laughs> OK. What's the time, Neil? It's Josh Whittacombe time. No, I don't think we should do that ever again. Um, <laughs> any other business? People's complaints about the show. If we uphold the complaint, if we reject the complaint... Not today! There, and obviously, uh, points added for how pedantic the complaints are. <clears throat> Let's begin. Dear Josh, producer Neil and intern Charles, what's this? do you know what we should have underneath this? What? The points of view music. We'd probably have to pay some money to use it. So? <laughs> you can't buy a price on good radio. Let me check the uh, spreadsheet for the show and let, I'll get it sorted let me check it. <laughs> let me check if you can put a price on good radio. No, you can't. Okay. Well, you can. You certainly, you definitely can. <laughs> Dear Josh, producer Neil and intern Charles, I was listening to episode 56 of the podcast. 24.07 minutes in, you played James. You referred to the song title as Coming Home. The title of the song is, in fact, Come Home. Did you know that? I didn't. I know that you're not a big James fan, as in the most recent episode, you referred to a Glastonbury set you saw, where you stated that it was risky for the band to open with set da Sit Down, as no one would then know any of their other songs. I'd like to, uh, I would like the hunter to become a hunted here. I'm going to AOB the aob -er. And it was a V Festival set. <laughs> Let me be clear, I wasn't there for pleasure. I was there for work. I hadn't bought a ticket to the V Festival. Um, and I, I, I do, they, they go on to say, uh, extremely unfair as there was at least five other belters on the greatest hits. <laughs> I, I question the word other. Okay. 
But also, I, I think I, I think the, the, I think the song sometimes is James's best song. Laid is their best song. No, no, you're incorrect. Can you um? Yeah, not to say, mate. Yours pretentiously, John Smedley. Good name. Perth, Western Australia. Good day. He is going to enjoy our neighbours themed Call My Josh that is coming up. Dear Josh and producer Neil. No mention, Charles. It's fine. Is it? Well, it is. Okay. <laughs> I am an Italian listener from Sheffield. We should get a map of our listeners. Oh, no, that wouldn't be very good because they're from Sheffield. Sheffield's on a map. Yeah, I know, but I was thinking it would be impressive because it would be global. Okay. I'm an Italian listener from Sheffield, frustrated by the pronunciation of Italian words on the show. During podcast 93, a listener tried to connect, co- correct your pronunciation of the word bruschetta. Uh, this is difficult because I'm going to have to say it a few times. <laughs> but I'm going to say how... Which you ended up pronouncing bruschetta, missing out the S. It's pronounced bruschetta. Yeah. Now, this is about to blow your mind. We don't have the letter K in our alphabet. What? Did you know that? Wow. Okay. They don't have the letter K in Italy. Fair enough. And now I'm trying to think of Italian places and footballers. (laughs) And then... So what do they do? Don't pronounce it. Don't use it. Do they not have Kit Kats? (laughs) Do they have Kit Kats in Italy? So this is how you get the K sound in Italy. There you go. I don't... I can't believe my ears. What are they, keyboards? Do they just have a gap (laughs) between the J and the L? No, they might have other figures on it. They don't have other letters. No, not letters, but maybe they've got other... Other figures. Or like a picture of a pizza. (laughs) (laughs) Like, um, what's what's the thing you put above an O sometimes? Umlaut. An umlaut. If that's German. I know, but they might have something similar in Italian. I don't speak Italian. I didn't study GCC Italian, so I don't know. I just find it fascinating. Who is that from? Um, well, Laura De Bella. I mean, she might be making that up. That sounds like a fake Italian name, if ever you're going to make it up. <laughs> Dear Josh, I mean, if that is a trick, we've fallen right <laughs> in. We'll just email in so we don't have the letter K. Yeah, they're going to believe us. Dear Josh, producer Neil and intern Charles, I feel obliged to correct you on your bad related error from your bed related error from last week. When talking to Matt Ford, misspelled, Josh mentioned that he had a captain's bed when he was a kid. He then went on to describe a cabin bed, which is completely different. A captain's bed is a normal bed with drawers underneath, while a cabin bed is raised with the potential for storage, a slide out desk or a seating area beneath. Well, wow. This gets bleak now. <laughs> I should know, having had a cabin bed from the age of five until I moved out at 22. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Could you imagine returning with with a girl? Yeah. She, I mean, she'd have to use the desk underneath to write to write her goodbye notes after you failed to after she failed to climb the ladder up to your cabin bed. All aboard. Oh, oh, Neil. Go back to your Moses pun. <laughs> I always used to look forward to coming home in my university holidays, much to the envy of my friends. <laughs> Yours pedantically, Joel in Norwich. <laughs> if you have an issue, or an issue, yeah, generally, <laughs> josh at xfm.co.uk. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. XFM. Heartshape Box, Nirvana. Dedicate that one to Chris Bourne. Going out to you across the airwaves. <laughs> yeah? We should do less of that. <laughs> yeah, we should. We should, we should That's the first time we've done it, and never again. Yeah. So if you want us to dedicate a song to you, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but it's good to have these ground rules in place. Correct? People need to know where they are. People respect rules. We're working the show on air, which is good. Well, it's You've got to constantly be working, mate. Yeah, I know that. If you're not working the show out, then you're going backwards. <laughs> Isn't that the first rule of radio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think the first rule of radio is get a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're just shouting at people. <laughs> um, but you don't have to pay money for the songs if you're just shouting at people then playing it over a boombox. <laughs> Like Oxford Circus. <laughs> what are we doing now? It's very difficult to get the texting going there. <laughs> <laughs> Text me if you have any. <laughs> guys, guys, before you get in the... You won't be able to text if you're going in the underground, mate. 
You're not going to eat. All right. Think about if you've got any stories about dogs, then text me when you get out the other side. 83936. <laughs> Tweet me. <laughs> no? <laughs> yes. S- situation we're all imagining. <laughs> and then you'd think you were getting interference, but it'd just be someone standing next to you talking about God. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, would they'd enjoy your Moses joke that you did earlier. <laughs> right. What are our text topics today? Number one. Um, <laughs> should I stand away from the mic and shout at it? Number one. <laughs> is um, <laughs> family members or work colleagues who've briefly been famous. <laughs> I mean, if we don't... Basically, we're trying to recapture the Ting Tings, Flory. <laughs> we want to bring back the Ting Tings. We do. We've got Finn Taylor on last time we was on. We talked for three hours by the Ting Tings, about the Ting Tings, by mistake. Um, now, I don't want to brag, but I when I used to work on Dora the Explorer magazine... <laughs> what? Yep. The editor of Captain Scarlet magazine was um, the former bass player from the 90s baggy also rounds Cud. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Don't remember them. Do you not? Rich, rich and Strange? No. Only a prawn in Whitby? No. Well, it, it might have been slightly before your time. They were, they were, they were really pushed by um, the likes of uh, Andrew Collins and Stuart McConey in the NME. Okay. Or Melody Maker or whatever. And um, they were briefly... I think they might have made an appearance on Top of the Pops. Right. Pretty exciting times. Massive. But then, you know, you've got, you got to make ends meet, so Captain Scarlet's <laughs> not going to write himself. <laughs> but then, when I was there, I was working there a year, Cud reformed for a one-off gig. But um, Andrew Collins couldn't go because he had tickets to see Kasabian. Wow. How times change. Yeah. Any uh, family members or um, work colleagues Uh, briefly been famous? Someone I used to work with, a fellow producer, she was on the first series of Pop Idol. Oh, really? Yeah, the one with... um, Which was uh, Will, Will Young? Yeah, I think, well, yeah, she got she got through to the kind of second stage, which was basically like in a conference room. And oh, yeah, the, a conference room or the moot camp. Yeah, so I think it was Nicky Whiteman, Pete Waterman, and Neil uh, Fox. She wasn't called Nicky Whiteman, Whiteman, was she? Wasn't she called Nicky? Uh, I don't know. Neither here nor there. Yeah. Neil Foxy Fox. Yep, let's move on. Pete, uh, Peter, Peter Watery Waterman. Yep. <laughs> oh, was that, was that, so she could have been in... Oh, no, that's not Girls... Oh, no, would that have been Girls Allowed? No, that was Pop Stars The Rivals. Oh, sorry, that was Pop Stars The Rivals. <laughs> Nicky Chapman. That was it, yeah. 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 Oh, so, I don't know if that's good enough, because you could have gone with Kate Lawler. Oh, yeah, it's a former... Oh, yeah, former Big Brother winner, Kate Lawler. Former Big Brother winner, Kate Lawler. <laughs> she saw off Spencer. She did. And Johnny, the, the Newcastle guy. The weed in the shower. The, yeah. Oh, and Alex the model. Yeah. There you go. God, why do I know these things? <laughs> two points, first person ever voted out of Big Brother. Sardin. Correct. Right, now, number two. <laughs> <laughs> Topic two <laughs> is, um, we're going to call it, sorry, I thought you were someone else. <laughs> Have you ever got up to the wrong person and started the conversation or done anything? This is because Alex Brooker from The Last Leg, uh, Walks into what he thought was our production office at um, ITV Studios on Friday. Shouted oi oi. And it was the Loose Women production office. <laughs> <laughs> if ever there is a loose... If ever there is a production office you don't want to walk into, shout oi oi. <laughs> oh. So I can only imagine the reaction of... <laughs> I don't know any of the Loose Women now, these days. Jane, Car- Jane McDonald? Jane McDonald's No, it's, it's not 2008, mate. Oh, sorry. Carol McGiffin, is she still kicking around? Might be. She's still a loose woman? Jamelia's on there sometimes. Jamelia? Yeah. Oh, the world changes. Josh Whittaker. Podcast XFM. Gallagher's High Flying Birds latest single featuring Foot Johnny Marr. Quickly on that, I just looked at the top... I, I looked at the top 40 for the first time about a week ago because there was a feature in The Guardian about how the charts were changing not because I was interested (laughs) you know I don't want to sound like an old person in my day featuring someone else didn't happen that often (laughs) 11 of the top 40 was someone featuring someone else people don't know they're born (laughs) (laughs) what is going on just write your own song and get on with it Anyway, <laughs> on the subject of, um, it's going to take some topping, but we were looking for people. Did you work with someone who was briefly famous? I really feel Sarah 
That's just when I work with Chico. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we're going to try... I'll, we don't do this very often, but we said we should. I think there's probably more to that story <laughs> than just that. We'll try and get Sarah on the phone after uh, 11, after about Chico time. Josh Widdicombe. Finn Taylor, good morning. Hello. Swift return after January 9th. Straight back in. Straight back in. Our booking policy is <laughs> deeply flawed. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good, yeah. Yeah? Good. Yeah, pretty good. Chelsea fam? Yeah. We won't go into it. No. Um, we, what we will go into. Let, let's, shall we cut to the chase? Let's. Have you met the ting Have you met the ting ting? That's, you you the ting -ting. That's the first question last, last time. Yeah. yeah, well, we were toying with, we were toying with this time, um, have you met and is Loppy? But uh, you didn't know who they are. I don't know who they are. But Do you I, not remember the JCB I have song? Se no, I have seen the man from the Rasmus eating a pasty at a train Have station. you? Yeah, about four years ago. Wow. wow. And, I, and I, like, I double-checked it wasn't just a sort of random goth. I got my <laughs> Google image out and made sure it was him. I swear it was him. Ellis James uh, from Saturday uh, once saw James Dean Bradfield eat pasta and chips. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, two questions. Number one, any member of your family or someone you've worked with who's been briefly famous? Uh, well, my dad was in like a in a kind of band in the eighties. Was he? Yeah, yeah. They're called Harvey and the Wallbangers. But he was also uh, he was in Play Days. No, uh, three episodes. Is your uh, dad Dave Benson Phillips? He's not Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> uh, he, he was called Sergeant Bandstands, and he plays trombone. Uh, for like, and basically, <laughs> but I, it, meant, it, it meant that I was like king of primary school. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Which stop was he? I don't know. I can't remember. Right. Did he get to meet the wire bird? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't go off off screen. She is <laughs> <laughs> a very different kettle of fish. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, um, so was he cut, or was he only ever? No, he was the role? character was not, well, not killed off after three. Episodes, <laughs> but, like, yeah, uh, it was just a. It was like he was in like a bell boy's outfit playing a trombone that wow. was his thing and, uh, so yeah. what's his living now he's a drama teacher all oh, right that's the trajectory <laughs> <laughs> musician kids tv teacher yeah. teacher yeah. um and um any any on um going up to the wrong person what, what we're calling this sorry uh, so i thought you were someone else uh well this, i've got two stories the first one i did to i, I thought i'd gone to school with a girl and then it turns out in talking to her that she worked for Babe Station and that's, <laughs> um, uh, that's, that's the bleaker one <laughs> and then the, uh, so what you went up to her yeah <laughs> and you said did we go to school together yeah 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 I was like hey from Oxford and she was like no I'm from Leeds and I was like oh uni no I didn't go to uni oh what oh, what could, but, oh god oh um, that is amazing <laughs> and then so um, did she bring up she she was the one that worked out what happened no I I sort of twigged and then asked as a kind of joke and then she said yeah 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 wow yeah <laughs> 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 and then what was the second one? The second one was... No, well, let's go back on the first no, one. I don't want to... So how, did it, how did it end? Uh, I sort of walked away with my tail between my legs. What, where were you? <laughs> Literally and <unmet. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just in a pub. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what was she ordering? I, I don't know. I can't remember. I kind of sort of felt she quite dizzy afterwards. She shouldn't like, be just drinking got off a before plane. work. Well, I don't know if it was a day off or oh, yeah, she's been. just come off a shift. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. She it might, be, do, she might be doing the early morning shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I like the idea of them clocking it. <laughs> <laughs> Time card and taking a bra off and doing it. Um, Is yeah, it 24 hours? I think so. But I think there's kind of a watershed. I, th I mean, I know. I know, <laughs> I know they go from like... Do I don't you? know when they cut it off, actually. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what... Well, that's a good... Just generally... The watershed begins at 9pm. Mm. When does the watershed end? It's a good point, actually. About four. I reckon about four. Whenever yeah. young kids are awake. I've, although I've never seen the first hour of GMTV. <laughs> <laughs> it must make for a really bleak moment where, like, at 3.59, you see all the baby station girls are getting dressed again <laughs> on TV. It becomes the opposite of what it's meant to be. Just girls getting dressed. <laughs> what, what's your second one? <clears throat> um, so this is about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, I was in TV Centre in White City, and me yeah, and yeah. Uh, another comedian called Mark Smith were working oh, yeah. on uh, Nick Helms' show. Yeah. And we were walking, trying to find our dressing rooms in the in the sort of that the circular basement, thing, yeah, yeah, circular bit. And, very, uh, it's very difficult to yeah, you get lost, so like a labyrinth. 
Yeah. And uh, this, this well, bloke with a kid, this bloke with a kid comes down and said, "Oh, oh, here they are, here they are." And we were like, oh, "What?" And we, I don't know, assumed that maybe he knew we were working on the show, but we weren't like on the screen. So I don't know what was going on. And he's like, oh, oh, "How old was the kid?" The kid was like six, seven. So you like, presumed the kid was a huge fan of Nick L. <laughs> what? what? He and turned his dad out. had identified the right. <laughs> <laughs> he went. He went. Um, oh, oh, uh, where, where's Dougie? And we were like, oh, uh, "What?" <laughs> and then he's going, ha, 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 sort of laughing <laughs> manically. <laughs> and then uh, basically, um, he sort of got us to sign <laughs> an autograph for the kid, I, and they ran off. With it. And then, but then we realised that the uh, we walked past McFly's dressing room, <laughs> and we realised that he thought because I, I mean I can't stress how, um, enough how much I don't look like I'm in McFly. <laughs> like, no, of course, I look like a Greek and guy who's kid not lost go. his pension or something. Like I don't <laughs> did look the like kid a not go. No. Well, the, the kid kind of had this weird... What we think happened was that the dad was either insane and generally thought we were in McFly, or he would be looking for McFly for so long. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, they'll do. Oh, he just went right, up to yeah. him. And the kid smelt fish. He was like, nah, this, these guys aren't in oh, McFly. Right. But, yeah. Oh, wow. Did you have your photo taken with them? No, we just signed our real name. <laughs> 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 On, like, a bit of paper. Um, <sighs> and he, on a similar note to that... Have we had Ivo Graham in before discuss when he met Steven Spielberg? No. Oh, that, I've heard this. <laughs> I've heard he this He went story. for a gig. The guy in the audience claimed to be Steven Spielberg. It was in LA. To the point where he had his photo taken with him afterwards and then showed other people. Like, it's not Steven Spielberg. <laughs> in, a, in a first for the show, we've, uh, we, we, we're gonna, uh, we've, we've got on the phone someone who texted in I think what the lesson is if you text in and don't give enough information we might have to phone you up let's not encourage that let's not encourage that Sarah who well she used to work with Chico good morning Sarah good morning Sarah good morning oh, for a minute I thought that feature had ended <laughs> hello well that was, can you hear us N Neil what have you done um not really this is unbelievable. As it should be. Try again. Hello, Sarah. Hello, that's better. Oh, my word. There was... I can't tell you the nerves in the studio. So Amateurs, like... honestly. Whoa. Easy. We're not the ones that work with Chico, Sarah. All right? So, Sarah, you... You, you used to work with Chico. You, you still work with Chico? Um, on and off, yeah. On and off. Oh, God, he does temp work. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, well, we're very excited to know. What, what do you do? I'm a holiday entertainer. Oh, really? So, what, like a red coat kind of? Well, yeah, well, yeah. We don't call them that. Well, I don't work for Portland, so... Oh, who do you work for? Um, it's a family-owned company. It's a one-off place. Give it a plug. I don't want, I don't want to put them into uh, distribute, so... <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't give them a plug. <laughs> so, so, Chico, does Chico work as... Presumably he's billed as Chico. He doesn't... He's not... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Chico time, basically. <laughs> And is it on, like, it's ferries? Are we talking, like, ferries, or is there a camp? What's the... It's a camp, yeah. Wow. And what, um, let's cut to the chase. What's Chico like? You know what? He's amazing. I thought he was going to be horrible, but... No, he's amazing. He's amazing? In what he's, way? He's just such a nice person. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> really so, nice. Well, it's not as if he had so much fame that he's lost control. Like, he's, <laughs> he's still fairly grounded, cos, yeah, you know... Yeah, So what does Chico's show involve? Um, singing and dancing, yeah. <laughs> and are you in, are you in Chico's show? I I was briefly. <laughs> oh, Yoko, play <laughs> Chico. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I'm plugging his new album now. Yeah, he's got a new he's got a new album out and then um, <laughs> new dance routine and everything that I had to do on stage. So. So what 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 songs do you do except Chico time? Is Chico time uh, a song? It is a song, isn't it? Yeah, it is a song. He likes to change the words, though. He changed it to it's very time one, so it made my, made my life. Oh, my word. I mean, what a treat. I mean, that really... <laughs> that, that made your life. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't get out much. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> does, does Chico live in? Like, does he live in the camp? No, no. He, he, I, don't know, I don't know where he lives. But he, tra he travels, like, to parks and stuff. I want my, my main thing of working with Chico. What does what does Chico have for his lunch? I don't know. <laughs> he, he's really he's really healthy. Is he? You're yeah. listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely interested. Neil's telling me to wrap it up next. Does Chico drink? Um, not 
Not backstage, no. Until once he gets on stage. <laughs> in, in the car. <laughs> in the car. <laughs> the car. <laughs> I think he's trying to cover up a problem. Well, I think we've got to the bottom of the Chico yeah. discussion. Thank you, Sarah. So have you got? Have you ever met any other celebrities? Uh, I work with Stavros Flatley, and I've worked briefly <laughs> with Gareth Gates. This is, this is a roll of honour. If You're only we had more time. Graveyard. Expect <laughs> a graveyard, which we are not allowed to name. Thank you very much, Sarah. This is X of M. Catfish and the Bottle Man on Josh Whitaker. Show. That, that's almost called Kathleen. If you are coming up with like a kind of cool woman's name to write a song about, Kathleen's not really the one, is it? That's, Kathleen Turner? Kath- yeah, apart from Kathleen Turner. Like, if, if someone said, it's not a very modern name, if someone said, I've just had a daughter, she's called Kathleen. I, d- I'm not I, don't, I don't think I'd have an opinion on it. Would you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's fine. Would you? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. What do you think of the name Ellis James's daughter? Don't know it. Betty. Well, mm. <laughs> I think it's very strong, but uh, he's listening to the show, so this oh, is, is it? awkward. It's a bit twee for me. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm sure Betty James actually Betty James is a good name I can see well, Betty James as like she sounds like she's in the singer. wild west yeah <laughs> oh Betty James <laughs> oh like two men shooting over her I really hope I really hope he's listening <laughs> <laughs> now call my Josh in which we're going to give you five statements sorry <laughs> call my Josh yeah that's what we've called it oh right that's what we've called this okay. feature <laughs> I didn't come up with the title but as always Neil can't have a feature unless there's a pun in the title. Although it has been pointed out, that's not even a proper <laughs> pun. <laughs> What's it a pun on? You could have disagreed if you wanted to. Bluff. Is it a pun yeah. on bluff? Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's just changing the It's not word. good enough, Neil. <laughs> Let's just get through it, then. The feature's good, though, Finn. All right, great. Um, now, I'm going to give you five... I'm going to give you a topic, and I'm going to give you five of that topic. You have to just say whether they're true or false. Okay. Uh, the leaderboard stands, Neil. Pop. It stands. There's only two. There's two people that got five out of five. Mm-hmm. Matt Ford last week and BT Edmondson just before Christmas. Right. Okay. Uh, Nish Kumar. Oh no, there's there's one. Two out of five is the lowest score. Yeah. Okay. Your topic is. Neighbours storylines. Mm, strong. All right. You feel you feel if it's the right period, then yeah. Okay. Are these real or false? An attempt to win back Madge, Harold Bishop recorded a rap single called The Lassiter's Rap. <laughs> false, because I don't remember them splitting up. That that's your main issue with that storyline. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also you can't rap and play the trooper. That's, that's not humanly possible. Because your dad proves on play days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One out of one. Yes. Okay. As part of a bet over who has the toughest job, Carl Kennedy becomes a surfer for a week while Brad looks after the community's medical inquiry. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that's just about sure, plausible sure enough. you're thinking? That's just about plausible enough, isn't it? But, but the thing is that it's a soap, so it means people die quite a lot. So, I, I, I mean, I don't think they'd have had someone die on Brad's. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Where was Carl? He was just but catching if, some yeah. swell. If they if they wanted a quick turnover of like <laughs> actors, like they did in Brookside, they just burnt the whole place yeah. down. They went, oh no, another plane crash into oh, the yeah, centre yeah, of town. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say if, uh, true. You're going to say true? Yeah. It's false. Oh. One out of two. Okay. Hannah Martin mm-hmm. steals a bit of Ayers Rock, but is cursed and almost leads to Debbie being electrocuted by her hairdryer. True. <laughs> you think that's true? Yep. Show your workings. I mean, what, what, what else is it to say? That's, that's obviously true. It is correct. <laughs> yep. Two out of three. Okay. You, you, you could get four here, get which would be a good strong score. Yeah. After Shane Warne is hit by Carl Kennedy's car and gets amnesia, Libby Kennedy has to teach him to bowl spin in time for a big test match. <laughs> Guest starring Shane Warne. Um, oh, right, my main... I don't think Libby would be the best spin bowler. I think she'd be a medium pace at best. I think if you want a spin bowler, you get toad a fish to do it. <laughs> so I reckon that's false. <laughs> it is false. Yeah. <laughs> Three out of four. These are good fake ones, though, because they're just about <laughs> believable enough. <laughs> the Korean Lim family 
move into the street <laughs> and are accused of eating the Martin's dog, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I really hope that's true because I really hope that's kind of <laughs> neighbours' attempt to deal with racism. <laughs> um, uh, true. Correct. Yes. Oh, very good. Yes. yes. Four out of five. Four now, out of five. That's strong. There is a worry that the. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that last one's true because otherwise I would have looked like the racist. Yes. Well, that's the other reason you had to. That had to be true. <laughs> <laughs> but the best thing was we we researched that story this morning. Like, this mor- storyline this morning, and um, Charles found on YouTube. It, in turn, Charles found on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is um the do you want to hear the moment when Julie Martin confronts the woman from the Lim family <laughs> yes. about more eating her anything. dog more than anything <laughs> it, I hear her dog was in your yard last night <laughs> Yes, she paid us a visit. So you admit it? Admit what? <laughs> she wandered in and played with Tommy until it was time for dinner. Have you no shame? What are you talking about? Poor Hannah. How am I supposed to tell her that her pet was barbecued? That sort of thing might be acceptable in your country, Mrs. Lim. But in Australia, we consider it barbaric. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) The writer's room must have... (laughs) When did they think that was a good idea? Also, just to be clear, Mrs. Lim can't act. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's the least of the problems, but Mrs. Lim's performance in that is beyond poor. Well, it's quite cold, isn't it? I guess that's what they wanted to show. (laughs) God. What year was that? Do you know? Like, <laughs> Don't you know the storyline yeah. about 1955? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's astonishing, that, isn't it? It was. <laughs> well, I mean, the thought that no one questioned it. Like, even one of the actors. Yeah. Surely the people playing the Korean family must be like, this isn't all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not all right with this. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. I mean, we should get more. Um, we should get more sound files on Call My Josh because that is um, that is glorious. Can we can we get that made into a sting, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> can we get um, just the Josh Widdicombe show in Australia? We consider it barbaric. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Oh, XFM. Hey, I told you so. The hives. Josh Widdicombe on XFM. Finn Taylor. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, producer Neil. Morning. Intern Charles. Morning. That's everyone. Now, one text on each each topic. Yes, please. Which do you want first? The famous family okay. members thing. Ted Tooley. Good name. It's a strong name. Strong Ted. Betty James and Ted Tooley. <laughs> <laughs> My mark. Well, Ellis James clearly aren't listening because he yeah. would have texted. Which is annoying because uh, do you know what Ellis is a lot more good at replying to texts and listening to things that his friends are doing on the radio or on TV since he had a baby because he's got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Keep getting texts off him going. Oh, really enjoyed that bit on the X of M show. He'd never listened before he had a kid. He had other things going on. <laughs> Ted Tooley. My mum has her own segment on the Law Channel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Where she gives you advice on writing a will. Oh. I've never seen it. <laughs> how does he know she's got it? Right. Also, what, and how... What how, channel's the Law Channel? Can we yeah, find that, that out? the channel? Also, how, how does it change week on week, that segment? Yeah. Sh- surely that's just one, a pre-recorded thing, they... That's a... That's a s- and also, like, is it 24 hours, like, babe station? <laughs> what, what slot's she in? What, what, what shift is she on? The will slot. Late well, night? D- late, late at night. Yeah, is, is there a will watershed? <laughs> well, I really depress people late at night. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Is, is there a law channel, Neil? Uh, what else would be on the law channel? There's, there's legal TV. There's legal TV. Yeah, or is that his rival? <laughs> Google Tooley Will Law Channel. <laughs> <laughs> the Law ch- Judge Tooley. Uh, right. You, you, do you want? Do you want one on? Um, one going up to someone. Yeah. Okay. Um, once a video shop. Which is a great start mm. to any text. Mm. While trying to pick a DVD, I tried to persuade my then boyfriend to get a chick flick out. I sidled up to him, put my arm around him, nuzzled into his neck, only to find it was the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's textbook for what we're looking for, really, isn't it? But there's no real description of how it played out. How would you have reacted on 
if you'd been the guy? Well, just put your arm around her and you go on here one. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what the film is. Yeah. <laughs> God, was that like a blockbuster or something? What, the film? No, the shop. Oh, right. It doesn't say. So I'm, I'm just in a world of nostalgia now, just, <laughs> just remembering how big Pop Boss used to be. Used to be able to be like popcorn. God, they're Did great. You? But now they're just these horrible kind of <laughs> empty vessels. Do you know, you, should, you used to be able to do a trick in Blockbuster, which was, um, so they'd, you know, they'd have the, the DVD, yeah. which would be the cover, and then behind it they'd have, like, the... The actual copies of it in, like, a blank. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. So say it was called... I say it was the Four Shank Redemption. I say there was a they. Oh, they also had a pornographic movie section. Who, for a start, who's renting? <laughs> that. <laughs> how how have the you shame got of just how have you got the guts the to do morning. that? <laughs> but what? <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know that you get the porn movies that have got the similar name. Right. So you'd get that, and then you'd put it just behind <laughs> <laughs> the film of the similar name. And then people would, obviously, knowing that someone's going to pick that up, no one's going to check the, the spellings. <laughs> but do, do they not have to go to the desk and get the disc? Or yeah, that? but the, the, they're just going to go through with it there. Oh. Oh, God, that would be bleak. <laughs> <laughs> So, that if you can invent time travel and go back ten years, I've got a trick for you, Dave. <laughs> Josh yes. Now joined, for the first time in 2015, James Acaster. Hello. I just realised my chair's a lot lower than it normally is. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. well, it goes up every appearance you make, <laughs> and we lower it if you miss a week. Fair enough. How are you? Good, thank you, yeah. Good, good year so far? Yeah, so far. So far, been been lovely. The big 3-0. Had my 30th. How do you feel about it? Good. Uh, enjoyed my 30th birthday. You thought it was a bit weird. A few people did. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> wasn't wasn't invited. Nah. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> so you 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 would you would have been Finn. Uh, the uh, the reason why you wouldn't have been is because Nish Kumar uh, wiped my entire phone, and I had to uh, basically do a pass it on. Why oh, really? Uh, like Chinese people. Whispers. I forgot yeah. to tell you. Uh, <laughs> Chinese Whispers was another disastrous storyline on Ramsey Street. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese family moved in. Instead of even spreading rumours about me. <laughs> That's not what we do in Australia. It's barbaric rumours. <laughs> <laughs> um, James Acaster rented a room and then... Uh, in a pub. In a pub. Yeah. Not in a flat. <laughs> And then, How bleak um, would that be, renting someone else's house to put a house So I rented a room for two hours so that he could DJ to his friends. It was great. I'd, I'd love to do that. Because my, my friends don't let me put my music on, so <laughs> yeah. that'd do be you, great. Do you want to take us through some of the hits? Africa by Toto. Yeah, great. <laughs> Big hit. Uh, well, this went well. You're the Voice by John Farnham. That went well. <laughs> Uh, torn by Natalie and Brulee, a surprising, mm. a surprising hit. Was yeah. that a surprising hit? Well, I, I, I thought, I thought people going to think I'm a, a right dork for this, but yeah, no, emotion soared. Well, I've, I've tried to make that move last time I DJed at the Mahuncliffe Comedy Festival. Mm. Little tip: <laughs> when you're riding on the euphoria of LCD sound system, <laughs> don't go into deeply dippy. My right, said Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It isn't the transition... You can't follow a genuine hit with a funny one. Yeah. You have to kind of break them in. Yeah. I actually... We abandoned... We abandoned before the end of Deep 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 to save the dance floor. <laughs> it was you and your brother, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you... Did you, have you ever... Did you have to abandon any? Uh, I didn't abandon any. There's some that maybe what was the, What have. were the real stinkers? The one that I think... Because following up Africa by Toto is really hard mm. because people feel very happy. And I yeah. followed it up with Come Baby Come by... Uh, what was it? <laughs> Crazy Town. No, that's no. not Crazy Town. The Out Here Brothers, no. It's uh, K something. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that you one is too jokey. You should have followed problem. Africa with Europe. <laughs> yeah, I should have done a whole world tour. <laughs> a world tour. <laughs> <laughs> Played Rotterdam by... Uh, Australia by Manning uh, Street. And Rim. then play Horse of No Name by America. Oh, yeah. There you yeah. go. You could have done it. Oh, what was I thinking? There you go. Anyway, James. Any members of your family or people you've worked with have ever been mildly famous, or have you ever gone up to the wrong person? Uh, no, no, my mum my mum was on pet rescue. Oh, I, yeah, I told you that. that. <laughs> really? Yeah, she used to look, look after bats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've discussed this. I told, I told Josh it, and he couldn't believe it. No, because you'd saved it till about the eighty-fifth episode. <laughs> um, go up to the wrong person. Do you, do you want to hear one from a, yeah, a listener? Yeah, 
I was in Asda with my dad and he asked me, that sad music. <laughs> oh, this is a sad one. Well, <laughs> it, it doesn't take place in Asda. <laughs> Snob. <laughs> I was in Asda with my dad and he asked me to go and find some bin bags. I managed to lose him. And as he is a middle-aged bald man, that's what I used to pick him up, to pick him out in busy places. I saw a bald man from behind and automatically assumed it was my dad. <laughs> I walked up to him, slapped him on the head and shouted <laughs> baldy at him. Yeah. <laughs> a common name I call him. <laughs> he turned around for me to work out I had slapped some random bald man on the head that wasn't actually my dad. I was mortified, so I apologised and ran away. I hope what that did was make him reevaluate uh, his relationship with his father. Yeah, his father's really made some mistakes so that that's where the line is drawn. Yeah. <laughs> that's the kind of, they're, they're always my favourite ones. When someone does something completely appropriate. <laughs> do, do you want one more? <laughs> my friends and I spent half an hour shouting it's a puppet across a bar in the 90s before realising it was Bradley Walsh and not Brian Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'd say half an hour. I'd say 20 minutes in, I'd have Bradley should have come over and had a word. Yeah, excuse me, I, I get this all the time. <laughs> Wait till I'm on the chase, then we'll see who's famous. <laughs> oh, I love him on the chase when he when he has to read something that's slightly rude and he starts laughing. My girlfriend thinks he's faking that. <laughs> really? What do you think? I've never seen the chase. Uh, yeah, I'm a pointless man through and through, obviously. So well, I've, I've, said, I've don't. said that since the day I met you. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Widdicombe Podcast. Lucky man, the verve. Tell you who is a lucky man. <clears throat> Anyone about to listen to this link? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I'm really glad you said, you got me, because when Neil said I've requested that song for you so you can make the connection. Yeah. I thought it might not work, but um, yeah. it really did. Uh, yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> You also requested Charmless Man. <laughs> <laughs> this charming man by the Smiths. Tell you, he is a charming man. <laughs> anyway, um, this is um, a hypothetical situation we're going to put you in. And we're just going to discuss it and see how you'll deal with it. We, we, just before, last week's one of how you would cope with the Olympics, James, you pointed out that mm. comedian Tom Neenan... Yes, he thinks that, uh, he legitimately thinks that he would be able to muddle through to the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. <laughs> he, that's complete he just rubbish. Thinks be able to, he thinks he knows, that he's, he's not a good tennis, he's never played, doesn't play tennis, anything like that. He just thinks what? it'd be fine. They go so to, far. They hit tennis plays so like the, the best at any sport of that sport. Yeah. Like, and the first thing everyone says to him is, <laughs> they hit it really fast, Tom. And he's like, yeah, but I'll be able to get enough back that I'd probably get through. <laughs> so, this isn't this isn't the question. But also, he'd earn so much more if he was on the tennis circuit. Yeah, why did he just do it? He'd make so much... I bet get the quarterfinals of Wimbledon must be if 50 his, grand? If his nickname was The Blagger, and he yeah. just kind of just, <laughs> just had a weird racket. I don't think I'd get a point if I played Andy Murray. No. 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 I don't no. think I'd get a point if I played Laura Robson when she was 13. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's move on. Um, um, now, uh, I don't know why I said that as if there was some kind of... Yeah, why was that dodgy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as if Finn bringing up a 13-year-old in itself was incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> because we need to move on. Because we don't mean to... Uh, yeah, it was just a general point about let's move on. Right, right. so this is a scenario. <laughs> it's just unfortunate timing for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just your name now. <laughs> now... <laughs> Okay, you have free year. You have to um, you you have your car uh -huh. in the car park, <laughs> but you have to live purely in the service station without them finding out, without them evicting you. <laughs> How would you go about your days? They can find out, but you're not allowed to leave. If you leave the service station, you will be killed. <laughs> what? Oh, hold on, hold on. What is this? What is this? What car park is my car in? The service station one, so you can sleep in your car. You can right. stay in your car as much as you want. Yeah. Can you go to work and come back to the... Do you, no, you, no, you can't no, you, leave the right, service so, station for a year. Do I work enough the money, you've got infinite money. No, you can get a job at the service station if you want. But once I can apply for a job at the service station. If you want to, you can apply. Which services is it? Um, I don't I won't tell you which one, but I'll tell you what they've got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they've got they've got um they've got Costa. Right. Yeah. I've, okay, I've narrowed it down to 50 so far. <laughs> I've got an MS M &S Simply Food, yep. a Burger King. Mm-hmm. Toilets, yeah, yeah obviously. Um, 
uh, that little area with the fruit machines. Right, it's Newport Pagnell. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, one of those little shops that sells, like, phone fascias. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're your facilities. So, OK. So take me through your week. What? <laughs> <laughs> I talk, no, am I wearing the same clothes every day? <laughs> You've got one outfit. Uh, one outfit, and I'm washing in the toilets. <laughs> well, that's your decision. You well, could, yeah. Your other option would be to buy bottled water and wash in the car park. <laughs> in front of everyone, <laughs> behind the car. Or, just, or go to that bit um, by the, the garage, with, by the, the lorries, <laughs> and get oh, yeah. the air and water thing. <laughs> I'll down to yourself. yourself down. That, that rod's a bit long, I'd have to get a trucker to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that Pay myself. a trucker to wash you. just hold that and aim it at me like we're in prison. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's my, like it's my first day of prison. And then he, he you'd have, have to have like 50p's to have shampoo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what? Oh, I live in the service Would station. you, would you, okay, these, so I'll throw out the questions, that obviously there's a lot of questions questions this raises would you front up to the people that work there about what you're doing or would you try and get away with it for a year without them noticing I would try and get away with it because I reckon everyone's too polite to bring it up no one bring it up as long as I'm not making any mischief so like if I just if I basically just change what shop I'm eating at each day <laughs> yeah and uh and just don't reference it and act like I've been driving <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to take me to, take me through your 24 hours so are you going to sleep in your car yeah, yeah well, what else are my options <laughs> what's my option what's my, <laughs> try and try and find a nook in Burger King like they don't notice me <laughs> just well, on the uh, counter yeah just yeah. trying to shut <laughs> just to sleep next door ask them to leave one of the machines on for warmth I'm not going to okay okay so you're <laughs> sleeping in the back of your car I sleep in the back of my car would you move your car repeatedly so that it didn't show up as a kind of lost car um, no, I would, but I'm, that's not why I'd do it. I'd move my car repeatedly, but just for variety. <laughs> well, then you've got, then you've got to factor in petrol costs. <laughs> yeah, but you... Yeah. I can go to the petrol station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all right for there. break. Hold on, how am I earning money? No, you've got... Time crisis. Right, you've got, got, you, I'm a millionaire. You're playing, you're you're playing time crisis consistently. You've got debit consistently. Card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're winning. <laughs> you could buy their silence with all the winnings from time crisis. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I could do that, actually. <laughs> okay, take me through your day. Okay, so I wake up. Yeah. I'll move my car first thing. <laughs> what time do you reckon you wake up? I think you just wake up when the sun comes up. <laughs> like, it's like a festival. <laughs> unless, unless, unless I'm blocking out the windows. <laughs> it won't be like a festival. In a festival, you always wake up, assuming it's two in the afternoon yeah, and yeah. slept in, and, and then it's, it says it's, it's heaven. And you've got to walk to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. What you would have to do. I'd have to walk, I would have to walk to the toilet. <laughs> but I'd move the car first so that, it, you know. I have to walk to the toilet in my house. I don't know about you. Yeah, I do, Josh, but it's not the same walk, let's face it. You have to go outside and then back in. Yeah. We've all walked somewhere at some point, but not all those walks are the same. Um, Is that the most profound thing you've ever said? <laughs> That's going to be on Twitter soon. People will be tw tweeting that, inspirational quotes. We've are all walked gonna, somewhere at some point, but not all walks are the same. Are you going to wake up like as the service station staff come in? Because you kind of want to... Oh, yeah, because you want to not... You don't, don't want yeah. them to see you wake up in the car each yeah. day. Because otherwise you're going to have to walk past and go, oh, M6. Oh. <laughs> I think I would learn what time they get in. Well, they're 24 hours. Oh, they are, aren't they? So I've got to, like, there's but always going to be someone The shop's to... open. Like, the shops are closed from, like, midnight onwards, aren't they? Yeah. It's oh, a bit open, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think I would time it. I'd have to learn that who comes in at what time. <laughs> and at one point, I'd have to always drive in. I'd have to, like, Duck, duck in a little, like, <laughs> hide somewhere in my car, and then when the same person drives in every day, drive in behind them, <laughs> and then park up next to them and just be like, I'll oh, just stop it for a quick cat. <laughs> stop it for a quick. Okay, so. It'll be busy so, day to day. I'm, so I'm, you're up at 7 I'm just, uh, I'm just doing a house calls up and down this motorway, really. Uh, so I'll probably be in here quite a bit today. <laughs> probably pop in a few times, actually. <laughs> so you get up at 7 a.m. It was 7 a.m. Move the car. Yeah. Then probably straight to uh, is it the Costa? Is it yeah. is the place mm -hmm. where I could get get herbal tea there? <laughs> yeah. Get, get herbal tea. Sit in, drink in, or drink in your car. I would alternate that. Yeah. I can't yeah. every day. You can't do the same every day. Drink drink in one day, and then another day. Literally, like go, go to my car or go to the petrol station, four court, just walk around yeah. there, drinking my herbal tea. It's going to be cold though, so you want to you want to maximise time in the service station. Yeah. Maybe do. Do you know what? Do you know what? No. 
I've, I've changed my mind on this. <laughs> I would not try and be inconspicuous. <laughs> Who cares? They can't do anything about it. I'll just jog around the service station. <laughs> my first thing is what I do. Get some exercise. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to a gym for a year. <laughs> so I, you jog around the car park. I jog, jog around the Sneaking car park. out of the pumps. <laughs> go, go in the service station. Find somewhere I can do chin-ups. Something that I can do. They don't care. They, they can't yeah, do anything. It's like, okay. the, it's like the terminal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, we carry on with your day just to avoid boredom now? Right, so then uh, going to Burger King. You haven't had a shower yet? Haven't had a, oh, okay. Would you wash on the taps you at the... Yeah, I was washing the taps and uh, and the hose. I, I think that the hose in the car park's a good idea. A bit yeah. of air as well to dry you. They yeah. can dry you with the fish. Obviously, <laughs> also have one of them, one of them doing the the water and just buy some shower gel from like one of the shops and get another truck and spray you with that. <laughs> or, go, or go through the car wash. <laughs> go through the car wash with the sunroof. <laughs> or yeah, no, just gaffer tape yourself to the front of a car. Yeah, <laughs> just get someone to drive. Why are they going in, mate? Can I double up? <laughs> yeah, Actually, I, I, I'd have to hug somebody. Probably couldn't talk them into that, but. I to wait until they're already in there, just run through. Kid, one completely, completely, completely naked, naked on top of the car, just screaming as well. I think I would just be screaming all the time. Really excited. Bring it to the end of your day, what would you do with your evenings? In my evening, I would be uh, basically hanging out outside, uh, looking like a pretty cool kid while they all close up. <laughs> I'm waiting for the people who get in there really late, which is basically just comics <laughs> and people who have made a mistake. Uh, and uh, start, start, just, just, just striking up conversations with those guys and ask them what's happening on the outside world. That's probably the main thing I would be doing, is asking people well, who are in the newspapers. service station. Am I allowed to read the newspaper? Yeah, well, they've got them, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, OK, well, fair enough. But I'll probably be using newspapers to block up the sun <laughs> uh, for a car. Well, I think we've dealt with that situation now. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. So, uh, to finish, how much money yep. would it cost for you to do that? You would have to pay me to do that for a year. F 50 grand. <laughs> really? I am getting a kickstarter going right now. <laughs> 50 grand. Oh, hold on, it's a year's worth. <laughs> you lost a year's worth. Yeah. And, and also, if you leave the service station, you, you are... That's not what you earn, James. <laughs> That's not what you earn. Just taking a pay cut for a worse life. What were you even thinking? This is... Sons and Sons Remember. George Ezra, stroke, big mouth Billy Bass, as we said last week. It would really work. It would really work. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we come to the end of the Josh Whittingham show. It's a chance for our guests to plug. James, because hey, you don't have anything to plug. No, but I'd like to plug um, a, a funny YouTube series by my friend David Trent called Totally Trented, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. It's a, it's a bit of a twist on the traditional prank show. Very, very funny. Done by Turtle Canyon. We also did Sweet Home Ketteringa, which is my web series. Someone who didn't have anything to plug. Yeah. He certainly went on. <laughs> uh, yeah, those two. Totally trended and sweet home Ketteringa. Plugged. There we go. Now, Finn, because you're actually properly plugged. Yeah. I, well, go on. Neil. It was going to be easy Neil. plugging on the show. So what I'm going to do, I will give you ten seconds. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to give you three questions to generate more time. Each, <laughs> each question, each, the first two questions are worth five seconds, the third question is worth a bonus ten seconds. Right. But should you lose that when you go back to ten seconds? Just, do I, do I, do Just answer the question each time. Okay. Yeah. But it, the, the twist Neil has put on is each question is about something that happened in the show. <laughs> It's very easy, don't worry, because literally I forgot to do it, so I've written the questions just now. Okay. Uh, so who worked with Chico? Sarah. Correct. What nickname did uh, Adam give his dad? He was the guy that slapped him on the head. Baldy. Correct. Neil, it was better last week when you really worked to the questions, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, no, I've had a lot. Uh, and <laughs> what animal... You've had a lot! You know behind-the-scenes stuff. What animal did... What? what, what? Uh, finding someone to... Do the show after yours. Oh yeah, that's good. Guys, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I need that much time. That's a really easy plug. Uh, what animal did uh, Julie accuse Mrs. Lim of, of eating your neighbours? Her dog. Yeah. Uh, good that, that that's still. Yeah. Good that we got that one back. <laughs> <laughs> that tenth racist point. None of us were comfortable with. Good to just make sure that everyone knew that happened. Uh, well, so you, you've got you've got thirty seconds. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. 
Oh, this is a bed, is it? Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, I've just wasted all that time. I've That's what it means, it means the sound. Not, I've, Neil hasn't just wheeled in a bed. <laughs> uh, I have made a comedy album. Uh, it's, uh, I've recorded it, and it's now free to download on Bandcamp from fintaylor.com slash downloads, and it's also on YouTube. It's called Finn Taylor Live from the Wardrobe, and I think we've got a clip of it that we can play. Oh, look at that. Fairly good. Yeah, do you want to hear it? Yeah. I think there's an unspoken list of ways to spend your time in terms of respectability, and that list goes porn at the bottom, <laughs> uh, then going on YouTube without a plan, <laughs> make a plan, all right? Otherwise, you are not coming home. <laughs> Be like, I've got to leave in ten minutes. I'll just say, uh, <gasps> Keenan and Cal bloopers. You've lost an evening. Gone. Uh, five hours. <laughs> they weren't that good at acting, it turns out. <laughs> he kept saying, who loves apple soda? <laughs> There you go, Finn. Yeah, you're the first person who's ever brought in their own clip. You're the most professional person we've ever had, good, isn't it? I also chose the clip that would fit in most well with your demographic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> shamelessness. The rest of it is um, the rest of it is is really harsh blue material, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? <laughs> really horrific crass. <laughs> if you like crass, <laughs> graphic stand <stand-up> up comedy, <laughs> Finn Taylor's your man. We'll tweet the link. We will. Thank you all for listening. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. If anyone does want to donate to the James Lake, we're going to start a... Um, Probably say that at the end. Yeah, I'll say that at the end. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> well, we should get you to say it at the end. Yeah. But if you want to donate, we're going to start a Kickstarter campaign to get James Lake to stay in a service station for a year for £50,000. <laughs> can't believe I said it so low. <laughs> <laughs> <It's an idiot>. <laughs> <laughs> James, would you like to leave us with a bit of your classic philosophy? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Josh Whittacombe XFM show. And remember, as you go about your week, we've all walked somewhere at some point, but not all walks are the same. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>